Hello everyone. So I'm back with another tutorial. So last time we I saw I um, we saw how to um, stabilize physics along chains of physics constraints. So this time it's gonna be a bit similar, I would say, in that we will have a long chain of physics constraints, right? So, but this one I don't think it's gonna need any stabilization. Um, in this tutorial, I'm going to show how to make a suspension bridge or rope bridge. And this is a tutorial that has been um, requested on the internet and in my comments uh, quite a lot. And I think it's uh, it's very easy to do and I'm not really sure why people have, uh, I don't know, have difficulties with it. But I'm going to show you really quickly how I do it. And um, yeah, you tell me. So let's see how this works. So for here, this is a nice chain. This uh, it's got to 20 planks, right? We can play around with it, pull on it, and it looks quite stable. I can I even have an object here. This is like a uh, hundred kilos. I can put it in it, and uh, as you can see, it's quite stable. It's got a nice bounce to it, right? And we can even jump on it, and uh, it looks quite. Uh, dynamic right so uh, yeah that's kind of it and what i did is uh, i put here um, kind of a control point the this endpoint here and you can drag it wherever you want and um, it will create a point between uh, a bridge between the two points and i've also put in a control here for the number of elements and so you can make them more rare or more uh, uh, more numerous. Uh, we will see later about the uh, test with the, uh, I would say, a crazy amount of elements, but I will see later. So let's execute this one. Oh, sorry about that. You can see it works quite nice even on the slope. I would say it's quite nice. And it's very easy to do. I'll show you right in a moment. Okay, so let's get into this. So first uh, I'm going to show you how I created this uh, and then uh, we're going to look at how there's some, a bit, some um, some things that need to be fixed and then maybe we can make a crazy test, uh, let's say, towards the end. So if you want to follow along with this tutorial, I'll put um, the project file in the, uh, in the um, video description. Uh, if you do appreciate that, please give a like and maybe share this video and, and consider subscribing because it helps a lot more than you think and it actually motivates me to, to do more tutorials like this. So uh, let's get into this. So if we open up the, uh, the actor right here, it's quite simple. Uh, actually, this is the whole blueprint, right? We have uh, some functions here that will go into detail. Uh, in a bit, but the, that's kind of it. So what I do is I I, I make the, the whole thing in the construct script construction and That's because it's nice because we can see them right here. If you do this in the begin um, It's sorry in the begin play right here. You won't see it in the preview. So I guess that's that's nicer Okay, so the idea is to create the step or a plank, whatever you want to call it. So we create this one and what we'll do is just we'll copy it over uh, to a certain distance and then we'll create two physics constraints uh, and connect those plank together. So it's basically a loop that does this for the number of iterations that we put here. And I said I put the endpoint. This is simply um, <coughs> A vector variable that is uh, has show 3d widget here so we can manipulate it in uh, the editor like this right so if we go into the construction script the first thing you'll see is that the f the plank we take it and we set its rotation so that it's looking at uh, the endpoints by looking at it means that it has the um, it has the the this is actually not right it's the it's the axis of the actor but 
its axis is uh, its x axis is looking at the endpoint right here so that's exactly what we're doing here setting so we take the orientation of the x axis and we calculate a rotation from that and we set that rotation to the step okay so that once that we're done um, with that then um, we go into the loop and the loop is very simple uh, for the number of elements that we have uh, and we do uh, something for this variable last plank that we set and the first iteration this is the step that we have right here and so for each each time uh, for of the loop we take the plank um, we uh, create another uh, static mesh from its location we'll see how we can do that in, in in here and then we create two physics constraints and we set again the plank so that next time uh, night next time is the, the plank that we we just created right and, and the the end I'll explain what to do this is actually at the end of the loop here so if we look into how to create we take the uh, we take the location, or actually the, tr the whole transform of the last plank, which is in the first iteration is the step. We go into this and we set the rotation and scale the same as the other one. Uh, and only the location will be different. So let's, how, let's see how we can uh, calculate this. So we'll put, we'll kind of move this over to a certain distance. And that's it. Huh? So how we calculate that distance? The whole distance from here to here, uh, divided by the number of planks. So this is what we have here: the endpoint. So the endpoint here is in in the relative. It's a relative location. That means it's relative to the the whole actor component. And since the plank is the, it's it's actually in the origin of the actor, this actor component then. Uh, it's zero zero zero, right? So if we take this directly, uh, that is exactly the vector we have uh, relative to the actor, and we take its length, and that will give us this distance right here, and then uh, we divide that by the number of planks, and it gives us uh, the distance that we need, and now uh, to to actually get the vector um, we'll have to add the vector from here to here okay so we'll take uh, the direction of the uh, the uh, well actually the direction of this which is the endpoint itself so we make a unit vector out of that and we multiply with the distance that we have now we have a vector that is pointing from here to here and we just add that to the location of the step. So that will give us the position of the next step. So that's, that's it. That's, that's, it's that simple. So we add static mesh here. I've set some stuff. You can set differently, but I just leave it like that. It's just that simple. So this is for the mesh and let's see for the physics constraint. So we need three things for that one is a physics constraint um, transform the other one is the components so for the transform we have well let's get into this so the the the, the, the here we use the same function to, to do both and the only difference is this switch right here that I'm going to explain so if we go into this we're gonna see the transform well, it's actually almost the same. We'll just uh, well, let's just see how we can do. So we have a switch right here, left and right. That means that if we look at this like this, we have one physics constraint here and the other one here. So this is the left one, this is the right one, if you look in that direction. So uh, what the only thing that differs in this is their location and we're gonna calculate it if we look here the transform is uh, the plank the last plank so 
the physics constraint that we put here is uh, relative to this one because this is the first right it's the first iteration so here we have uh, when this is true then we have pick a that means left so what do we do we get the right vector of the the plank so if we look here the right vector well this is not right actually it is not correct this is the x is like that and the y is like that and the right vector is y axis so that means it's on this axis with the pointing like that and and what we do for the left one we just uh, multiply it with minus one that means it's inverse direction and it goes like this and that direct we take that direction mu multiply that, that vector with 70 which well, this is actually put is depending on the on the scale of the plank so if this is bigger then just put bigger whatever you want so that will give us the vector from here to here and we just add that to the location of the the plank so get this location plus the vector and we get this one this is exactly what happens here the relative transform we'll just put that as uh, as the one from the plank and so that's it now uh, let's finish with the whole idea and we'll get back onto how to set the physics constraint because that is the most important part, I think. So in here I just set the constraint components. So I take the component one, let's look into this. Component one is the second plant plug and then is the first plank component two. All right, so we just set that and that's it. You're good to go so here i just set the last plank for the next iteration to the current plan that we have uh, we have uh, created so now when the iteration finishes and starts again this one is it's the last one we, we created here and it goes over it goes on for the number of elements uh, now when we finish this uh, this loop uh, then we uh, the last one if you look here you have this that is pinned so we have two fixed points well we should, to obtain that we just simply take the last plank and we deactivate simulate physics and it will stay in place by the way if you want you can do something fun also and not so let's go into this and let's say simulate physics and then let's say simulate physics on this one so now we have a bridge that is actually mobile let's see right so as you can see it's quite interesting you can play around with it so this is quite stable i would say so yeah very nice i'll leave you to kind of play around with this is necessary or for fun so let's put this back because we want to test some stuff still let's test this again that's good okay so where were you at so let's get back into the how to create the physics constraint so actually how to set it up because we created it so i'm gonna let's bring this one I, I think like this maybe you can see better oh that's not good okay that's better so um if you look here let's, let's go into this so let's let's take this as an example so we have this physics constraint so what happens here is that uh, what I've done is I've made this plank kind of uh, uh, welded and it only really rotates it doesn't as you can see it's limited that means it's kind of locked but with some soft constraints and so this plank does not move like that in any direction it just rotates around this point so 
uh, why I've put limited is because if we put locked, then we get some jittery movements from the the planks, and I'll just play around with this. But you just uh, put limited, and you put um, the amount of stiffness that you want, and some damping, and it will stay together. That's that's no problem. And we'll come back to this actually. So the the key here is the setting up of the rotation. So if you look at the physics constraint, you have swing motions and then twist motion. So twist is so these are in relation to the x-axis of the physics constraint, which goes which goes from this point to to the end point. So that means the twist is like that. It's it's in this plane. It's like that, uh, left to right, and then we have swing. Uh, we have swing that. Uh, let me see if I can. Uh, actually, I think I can show you with the rotations here. But uh, that's yeah, that's not great. Let's see. You know what? Let's create another one. Let's go back to this and let's create it's it's actually the same thing but I'll just create another one so it's it's aligned with the axis so it's just easier to show you so this is control like this you put like 20 here something and very easy you have uh, you have a functioning bridge right so okay so let me show you Let's pull this one again, like this. Okay, so the rotation, the twist is like this. Let me show you. The twist is like this. So if you look here, what I've done, the twist, I've put it to one. I mean, you can put it to zero. It's almost non-existent because the second plane should not, so just almost not rotate like this. So I put it to one, but you can put it to zero. Uh, what I've done is I set soft constraints here, so even if I put, if I put to one and it, it goes over one, it's still held in place by forces and not by uh, like soft forces, not by really violent ones. And we also have swing, and if I remember correctly, let me, let me see. Uh, mm, yes, okay. So swing one. This one, it's actually like this, rotation like this. So we don't want this plank to rotate from in relation to this one almost any at all. So we put one here and the last one is the rotation like this. And that you want to have. And you want to have quite a lot of movement. So I put it to 10, we can, to, to 90, you can put it to more if you want, but I think that's surprising. So, that's the basic setup. Um, now, uh, the the reason why I've put here because in other setups I've used locked on uh, <coughs> some axis. The reason that I put limited here th for this one and the rotation is because uh, when we get a lot of physics constraint like this. Uh, when there's a long chain of them, they become unstable and jittery if they have uh, locked here put, put on the axis. And that is because when you have locked, instead of soft forces um, that uh, apply to them, you actually get forces of, of uh, projection. So those are quite violent forces and uh, it would just start to jitter like that but it, it, it's true that it, it it keeps its form better but it's jittery so let's let's try this see so if we put uh well, actually i don't care about this one too much let's put the limited oh this one and you see quite quickly then that this is not actually actually works right now but if we put more elements then it will become probably and if, if you look at it let me see let's see 
you will see that actually it's, it starts uh, it starts uh, to jitter after a while we can try that one uh, let me see if it still holds with 30 elements yeah it still holds but from what I understand ah yeah okay so it's this is because we have a, a, a linear tolerance but if you put this to zero uh, let's see what happens yes so you get this right so that's because forces are drawing from other directions and at some point somewhere it has to give way and this is here and if you actually look at this um, it actually jitters let's look now this is not a behavior that you would like so that's why I put I just simply let's put this back to 20 I just simply put this uh, to limited and the only and this you don't need this you put this to 5 this will not take effect if you have a soft constraint well I mean it will but uh, really at the limits I think uh, so if you put the limited it's a lot more stable and the only drawback that you get is that the the the, the bridge has just lower hang go, hang is hangs lower right that's the only problem that you get but I guess it's okay I, for me it's okay at least so th same thing here is just more stable if you put soft constraints if you want to hang a bit higher then try to put this one uh, to more but at some point you cannot it doesn't well I mean this one I, I would say it's decent and if you put this one to 10 let's say you would get even lower let's see well yes and no Mm, let's see let's let's put this back to 50. if you really want to have a really low hanging uh, uh, bridge then you will have to set this uh, through a spline you put the the elements to a spline and then you just simulate it from there it will be low hanging if if someone really wants this uh, tutorial just just let me know in the comments and maybe i'll make it i don't have the time to do everything so I kind of have to pick and choose okay so so that's good that's I guess this is everything there's not much else to say uh, yes we can talk about the damping actually so the damping um, I've put some damping here uh, that's it so that the, 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 the bridge stabilizes more rapidly and the, the, that damping is between the movement of each uh, as you can see this is quite bouncy so uh, what you can do I've also put here uh, some more damping um, and this is by velocity uh, and it acts every time and but this only acts when it reaches the limit right um, so yeah you can augment you can put this higher and it should stabilize more easily um, let's see uh, let's put yeah let's put to a hundred but this will not take if in effect very much because it's between each of the planks between themselves so yeah when you you see it already stabilizes more quickly right I put this to a thousand although it's kind of overkill I would say let's see how it goes uh, yeah I guess that's okay if you really want you can go into this and the mesh and set um, what was that set the, the the linear damping here let's put this to 10 see what happens uh, well that was yeah so yeah if I put this bigger then it will get stable a lot quicker uh, yeah, the problem I have, yeah, 
Actually, you have to go into this one, not not this the first one, this one right here, and let's put this to ten, and now we should see the difference. Yes, so it just falls down like that. So I mean, uh, it's kind of extreme what I've put here. If you put two, I think it should be enough. Yeah, that's quite enough. Okay, so yeah, that's it. Uh, now I was talking about uh, uh, the problems that we might have with this. Let's put this to zero point one bef as before. And the physics constraint. Well, we don't care about it. Okay, so if you look into this and let's just get this. Uh, 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 just make this shorter and you will understand what happens, what the problem is. If you look at this and you go, okay, uh, listen, this looks nice. Well, wait, what happens here? What's this? Why are the planks have different distances between each other? Well, I'm afraid that's nothing we could fix directly, right? So this is because you keep you use forces to keep these uh, physics constraints together or like the limits of them together and then <clears throat> since the force is big then uh, kind of uh, the, 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 uh, let's say the, the engine kind of chooses which constraints to give way and kind of picks and chooses like one yes one no and so something like that so I think it, they, they get into like kind of a queue or something and they get processed there, I'm not sure. But you get stuff like this. So of course a really, really easy fix for that. And this is actually in real life, you don't really get a, a bridge like this. You just put the, the, the distance between them bigger and then you, you and by the way, the rope, I never showed you how to do the rope, and, uh, and then I didn't actually search for a solution here. I leave that up to you, but if you put uh, this distance, you'll never see the, the issues, right? And uh, it just, yeah, it just works. So if you want to fix this somehow, what I've tried to do at least here, uh, you see this one. I've actually done three versions of this and this one is another version that I said okay let's see what happens if we put one in the middle so unfortunately it doesn't matter much because if you look here it's just kind of the same let's try to get this at the same distance just so that you can compare ash meat and uh, let's put this uh, let's make this smaller so we get like this and just execute it like that okay first of all as you can see here you notice something interesting is that the, the the this one stays higher because we put three physics constraint and that makes it more stable so of course it consumes more resources but it's better if you want more stable uh, uh, bridge so here you can look I think it's uh, let's let's get let's get it smaller even more because we want to see the difference clearly um, I think that should be it so if you look here the difference is clear at some point here especially but if you look here it's I would say it's better right yeah so this is this is I would say this is uh, you still have differences between some of them but they look more parallel as you can see so that is one solution to put another physics constraint um, in between like this you can look into the blueprint or how to do this. I won't explain the whole thing. Now the third solution is this one. And what I've done here is a bit different 
I didn't put two physics constraints, I put just one, like this. And uh, let's move this out of the way, I'm not really sure if <laughs> this might not be... Uh, let's put this here. Um, so this was 20. That looks okay. Let's execute this. So if you look at this one, they are actually all parallel, but there is a small difference between them. Now this small difference, I there's not much I can do about it. So I guess we'll have to live with it. But there's no difference between left and right. They're parallel. So what I've done in this implementation is that I've put only one constraint like this. Uh, and there is one constraint if you look here uh, let me see so you have this constraint as before the same thing I put but I put it to center you can go ahead and look at the code and we have one constraint that constrains each of the planks with the first plank that we constructed so what does that mean and let's see how it is constrained uh, uh, sorry, this one. It's actually this one. Uh, here I just set the constraint components. So the 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 linear limits I just leave to free, and I will control the 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 angular limits and the swing. The swing was. Uh, let me see which one was this? swing two was. This one, uh, uh, wait, sorry, it was uh, this one, like that. So the idea is that we want this uh, plank to be constrained in the plane between this plank and this point. So it doesn't go, it doesn't rotate. And also it's actually like this, it doesn't rotate like this. Why? It's because if we if we live with, without this, if we don't, let's, let's deactivate this one. Uh, not like that. Actually, let's deactivate it here. Don't, we don't care. Uh, when you go ahead, so this looks fine. That's cool. And if we take this, it will never stay on top of it because it turns over. I mean, it, it does stay a bit, but as you can see, it turns over. So what we do we the physics constraint we stop this rotation because we uh, lock it and then if we try again now uh which one was this one uh it's okay that's better i just put back what was before so if we try the same thing now you see it does it doesn't rotate anymore right so that's good so you still get this distance i'm not really sure what to do about that but you have this three version that you can use i think uh i think the best might be this one with three physics constraints but that consumes a lot of resources so you know it's your it's your call however you want to do it but yeah so i guess this is it now the only thing we said we'll do is we tried some crazy thing so let's see so there was if i remember user called marvel master he's actually doing tutorials really nice tutorials you can check it out on a religion and he was asking about uh, a, a, a chain uh, um, suspension bridge with like 60 elements elements so should i i mean do i dare I think I do. So we have six demolents here, so just let's put this further away. Uh, even further. Mm. Ah, that starts to look good. But let's bring it closer because it will go to the ground. So yeah, just just keep it up a bit. Ooh, that's not a weather. Ah, you know what? Actually, let's try it like this. So, do I dare hit play? I think I do. 
So, would you look at that? Actually, stay stable. So, we're talking here, just to understand what's happening, we're talking here about 60 uh, physics constraints times 2. So, 120 constraints together. And I can even walk on it. And, and just... Let me let me just uh, grab it and ooh, it becomes uh, wild after a bit. But yeah, I mean, I mean, uh, this this actually um, shows that it works because if we really want, I think, um, I think this. Uh, let's go with the. I mean, I wanted to show you that even a big one with like you have 120 physics constraints still works, right? If you if you keep the uh, soft constraints that I showed you, the, the setup with that, then it works. There's no problem. I mean, this can be fixed too with the other version where you just have one physics constraint. But still, this looks quite nice, I would say. I mean, uh, it was a, more, a lot more stable when I asked it. Now I'm recording the screen, so it consumes a lot of uh, processing power. But still, I mean looks awesome but let's let's you know what let's just try with this one before finishing let's see let just go like this like that and just pull this way over here and a bit upwards and then we see the 60 and then we play yeah, so as you can see, this is a lot more stable. Ooh, now yeah, this is a, this is because of my screen recording, which which consumes a lot of resources. So, <clears throat> I really, if you really need this, as I was a, I would say as a really important piece of your game, you can you can actually do it. I wouldn't recommend it though. So it's it's nice when you ah when you're on the bridge it actually ooh, ah, okay well yeah I think uh, I think I made my point you can actually use this it's something that can be used um, but I mean you just put it one and that's it and by the way if you if you are using a lot of physics and you're using a game uh, like a, maybe a platform or something whenever the player is not in the shot just try to deactivate the physics constraints if you can or uh, deactivate the whole actor if you can uh, put it to sleep or something because it it counts a lot so yeah I guess that's it for this tutorial this I would say short tutorial should I say not really huh uh, but yes, I hope this is useful for you and uh, yeah, just uh, I'll try to be back with another tutorial soon. <laughs> uh, this one took me a week, maybe maybe I'll make a one uh, really soon. Uh, someone was asking about how to set the uh, physics constraint uh, reference points. Uh, so if you look here have the um, so you actually have to take this one so a reference frame this I I have I know how to explain this to you so I'll do this in some tutorial I'm not sure if it's gonna be the next one but we'll see uh, there's some people that also asked for steering uh, on the the, the, the the car that I made, the car suspension. So I might be looking into that also. Uh, we'll see. So thanks a lot for uh, for uh, watching this. Uh, please share this video and um, like it and, and even subscribe if you want because it motivates to 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 motivates me to to do more tutorials. So thanks a lot and see you next time. Bye bye.